Hey, hey, how are you guys doing? I know I promised you guys a live video for production tips, but I had somebody fly all the way to see you guys. You are not gonna believe, I didn't know, I, we didn't know we were gonna do a Facebook Live. She said, I'm coming to Portland. I wanna see you, let's do dinner, and you will not believe who's coming. Okay, wow, hi Sandy Purdue, how are you? Gosh, I wish you could join me, because we're gonna talk about production. So I'm here in Portland, Oregon, and somebody has flown to see you guys and give you the greatest tips in the world. This is what, we're hitting October, end of the year, get those production, use up the insurance, get massive results. We are waiting for Dr. Ho. Where are you, Dr. Ho? <laughs> I swear, I'm gonna make you work for this guest. If you guys have any questions, shoot them over. We have talked about production. Everybody's wondering, how do you get people to schedule? How do we get them to buy the treatment? How do we get them to accept the treatment? How do we get patients to value your treatment? I have a special guest. We want to make money, right? Who wants the queen of dentistry here, right with us, learning production tips? I am so excited. You're not going to believe who is sitting here in Portland, Oregon, getting ready to do a conference tomorrow, and she's having dinner with me. I feel so honored. This is my amazing, amazing friend. How many of you guys know her? Hi, guys. <gasps> Hi, it's Sandy here, and we're having so much fun. You shake the camera. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're at Portland City Grill having a great time talking about you guys. Yep. Because we want to help. Yep. We want to help. So what are the challenges, right? Can't get those people to schedule. Right? That's right. How do we get them to schedule? This is the end of the year. It's so easy. Yeah, it you is. Well, your production. there's a, a few things going on. First off, if you have holes in the schedule, I challenge each one of you to go to the computer and generate a report with that'll show you all of the outstanding treatment for say that was diagnosed the past year. You're gonna be so surprised to see the hundreds. number of pa hundreds of patients. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> and, well, really, I, I, I see practices with as much as a million dollars outstanding in treatment. Yeah. And that's just insane. But the problem is, guys, whenever the patient's in the practice, you guys have to change some things to get them to schedule when they're there. That's really the out point in all of this. Yep. It's get some likes. I want to see some hearts. It's once once that's they leave, stuff. once they leave the office, the chance of you getting them back in with every day, every week, gets less and less. So what we're seeing whenever we start monitoring this and, and training staff, the thing that really makes the difference is to handle their objections. And they do have objections. And until you do that and you get them to see the benefits of the treatment, you're, you're just gonna see the backs of a lot of people's heads. Preach it, sister. You know, that, that's what's gonna happen. So there's three basic objections that that you have to cover every time you present a treatment plan. Yeah, I don't have any money. That's one what of them. That's what right. That's What's one the of them. next one? The next one, the big one is unaware of need. Because if we had people walking into practices and they said, doctor, I think I have some dental work that needs to be done and I have $10,000 in my pocket here, boy, wouldn't our life be easy? Mm -hmm. So financial and unaware of need, that, that's huge. And then the third one is fear. So every time you present a treatment plan, it's fear, financial, and unaware of need. You've got to cover those three things. So that's where your your photographs come in. Yep, prevent those objections. That's telling them what'll happen if they don't get the treatment. That has to happen. And it's, it's the most important thing. Now we have something, we teach something called the appointment wrap up. So every practice should implement this starting next week. And uh, what you do is, this happens with the dental assistant and the hygienist. So what happens is, the doctor leaves the treatment room, the dental assistant or the hygienist is with the patient, leave the bib on, because we all know what happens once that bib comes off. Mm -hmm. They want to run. They do. They do. They want to run right out of there, Heidi. So leave them in the chair, leave the bib on, go over everything that was done that day, talk about what needs to happen next, reinforce what doctor says, and what will happen if they don't come in. Then it goes, the bib comes off. Then make sure you, you've answered all the questions. If you haven't answered all the questions, well, guess what? Yeah. Don't say you need a crown. Say, yeah. You know you what? Fix that crack too. They may even make the appointment, 
and later call to break the appointment. Mm -hmm. If they don't really understand why they need the treatment and you don't work out the financials because yep. they think they can't afford it, right? But they, mm -hmm. they really yep. don't it's understand. Like, how am I yeah. going to make my house payment? Well, you don't do it, it's going to cost you $4,000. You can't afford not to. You can't afford not to. That's right. Yeah. So that's what needs to happen. So it starts in the treatment room. Your broken appointments start in the treatment room. The incomplete treatment, the low case acceptance, which by the way, the national average is 38% that's <sighs> per Henry Shine. Could you 38%. imagine 10 phone calls and you barely get four people in the chair and one person might schedule? Oh my yeah. gosh, you guys gotta get those numbers up, track your numbers. Yeah, that's that's a good point, Heidi, because yep. they're, not, they're not tracking their numbers. Yep. So they don't really don't know who's best at presenting treatment plans mm -hmm. and who shouldn't be presenting treatment plans. Right, right. Or where where did the number drop? Was it the person doing the financial arrangement? That's right. When did they say no in their mind? Yeah. We gotta get them to say yes. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So just to recap what we talked about there, because one of the questions that you got, right, was about increasing treatment plan acceptance. Well the first step is knowing how you guys are doing, keeping score. How are we doing with treatment plan acceptance? What is our percentage in our practice? Then after you do that, you work on yeah. verbal skills and role playing. Right, right. And how are you making a difference in the practice? You as employees, right? how are you paying your own rate? Right? right. They don't think like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I found this. I offered whitening. I did this. I did that. Replace your wage. You're expensive. And we've both been dental office staff. Yeah. Both of us. Oh my gosh. Office when managers. Worked, we didn't even yeah. have a front desk. It was a front deskless office. Really? Yes. Yeah, how, how did that go? We had <laughs> systems. We had systems. That makes the difference. I had a great first boss. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we've been there. We've done that. You know, we've learned the hard way. We've learned by doing it. That's the best way to learn, right? Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. That's it's it. Totally uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable with it. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yeah. Practice, and it's not not uncomfortable. Like this is uncomfortable to me. I hate doing this, <laughs> but I do it for you because we care. We want you to succeed. And so, okay, good. So we so we answered some questions. So put it there for them. Implement the appointment wrap up. Find out what your percentage is. Mm -hmm. Work on your verbal skills. Okay. What else End are they year. Want? End of the year. Oh yeah, it's that time of year again. Yeah. Yeah, it's that time All of that year. Insurance remaining, just dollars waiting. You know what I think? I think that it's a, also a good time to look at who has incomplete treatment. So not just the people with insurance. So you can have two separate letters, like one that goes out for people with unused benefits and then one that goes out uh, to people that has incomplete treatment. Yeah. So I think it's a good time to do that. And so what if they're max? Book them, book them January. Say, I'll reserve that. We're very busy. Or if they have decay. Get them in now because you don't want it to cost more. It's going to get worse, right? Yeah. It's always going to get worse. That's what that's what practices are not telling. They're not showing them the infection. They're not showing them the pus. They're using those words. Yeah, the trigger words. That's what yeah, we call them. Yeah, trigger yeah. words: infection and blood and pus. And yeah, crap. And we're that with that it's getting to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's so southern. Hi, Doctor Perdomo. Hi. Hey Michael, the podcasting king, round mark. Yeah. <laughs> so what else? So okay, so we got uh, treatment plan acceptance, working on those objections because if you don't get the objections, it's not happening. Right. Appointment wrap up is very important. Uh, end of the year letters for incomplete treatment and unused benefits. Yep. Yep. Now recare. They won't schedule. What's oh, going on with recare. That? Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's the thing with recare. You got to get your hygiene department stepped up a few notches. Yep. Uh, it's not just a cleaning. I hate to say that because that's mm -hmm. overused, no, but it no. really is the Parodonal. truth. It's Therapy. really the truth. Give it a cool name. You've got to, whenever they're in that hygiene chair, the mm -hmm. hygienist has got to spend at least. Hi, Dr. Ho. It's about time you're late, <laughs> man. <laughs> at least 70% hearts. About 70% of the time, they need to be talking about dentistry, and they need to uh, take blood pressure, and they need to find things specific to that patient. Yes, they have diabetes. That, that, that Anything. A reason that they need to come yeah. back in six months. And that's what's not happening. When I visit practices and I'm walking down the hall, I don't hear mm -mm. them saying, let me show you what's going on in your mouth. Let me show you the infection. Mm -hmm. Let me show you your swollen gums. Let me yeah. show you the pus. Yeah. We don't want people just doing what's on the schedule. Four bite wings, profi, I don't so uh, you, they've got to They've got to see it and they've got to want to appoint for mm -hmm. that, that next hygiene appointment. I'll 
tell you the real problem that I'm seeing in, in the hygiene department is that they are on automatic with giving the, that next appointment. Just everybody gets the next yep. appointment. Not everyone should get the next nope. appointment. Not their back if, count. If they're, they're that's right. If they've been breaking appointments. Why would you do that? They broke three appointments to make it today. Why would you? Why would you give them an appointment six months in advance when they can't be trusted? And so other girls getting wrapped up. It's called control. Good control. Somebody's going to be in control. Yes. You are the patient. Look at those likes. They like what you're saying. Yeah, because it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we love you guys. We want you guys to succeed. So there's so many things that you guys can do. You have to know if you had a bad day today yeah. that you just have to, to know that no practice is at 100%. Every practice can do better. So it's easy to do 20%, 30% more. Easy. So you just, you guys have to focus on what's important. And what I see happening is the lack of training. How about you, Heidi? Lack of training, lack of training, lack of staff practice. Staff just don't know. It's, you, the doctors are pulling out their hair. I feel so bad for them. They're like, Heidi, help me. What do I do? Right? You hear that? Yeah. 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 You need to role play with these four team members. They just don't know. They're complaining, but they haven't been trained. That's right. They, they have good intentions. Right. They want to work hard. They, they do. They want to deliver. But uh, it's all about good control because the good control is what gets your income going. <laughs> Dr. Podoma. Lack of training. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know Greg May, but we will meet. I know right? Greg May. Oh, there you go. See, yeah. awesome. You got your plan. Of course, Sandy shows up. Everybody shows up. No. <laughs> now, this is fun. So, I was coming to Portland for the Townie uh, Beer CE. So, it's uh, like about two days or, of drinking beer and lectures. So, I'll be lecturing here on Saturday, and I couldn't come to Portland without Heidi. Heidi. <laughs> She's shaking my phone. So, I'm really excited. <laughs> I know. It's so cool. We're just, we just love it. And I'm drinking this. iced tea. Yes. Southern girl. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Lots of hearts. They like that. It's make money, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're not about making money. We're about helping people get healthy, right? right. One smile at a time. Help them get healthy. Tell any them what office they need managers? To know. Are there any office managers here? Yes. Anybody? Are there any office managers? Here, here's the thing, guys. I just want to say, is that office managers. If you, if you're listening to this, now there's different levels of office management. So if you have like seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fifteen, eighteen employees in an office. You need someone assigned to being an office manager. But what does an office manager do? So I, I notice that a lot. It's like they don't know what to do. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, your job is to make sure that everybody under you knows how to do their job and you spend your days training and you're right. out there with them and you're not in your ivory tower. Right. And you change that in your practice and you're going to see all these other problems that you guys are talking about and questions that you asked Heidi, they're going to go away. So you need, again, that person, her job, the num or his job, can be a guy, yeah. their number one job is to make sure that everyone can perform, but what they do, you know what they do, Heidi? What? They try to do it themselves. No, no, yeah. no, no. They do it. They, they have don't know how to delegate. Clear job descriptions. That's right. Clear job That's descriptions. Right. I saw a clinical, gosh, I'm sorry on my cell phone, I saw a clinical treatment coordinator. Um, wow, insubordination's my middle name. No, no, no. No. You can do it just to have expectations, right? Like, this is what I expect. Okay, report back to me. How many did you call? How Look many? at Rohit. There's my friend from nice. Practice by Numbers. I told I told Heidi just a few minutes ago that all our clients get Practice by Numbers, Absolutely. and that helps PBN. us track. Yeah. So he look. He's saying you need to be able to find staff in Seattle. We cannot find good people. Oh, they're I hear there. That they are there. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in dentistry. You have to look in another industry. Yes. Um, Attract the right person. They want a great job. They want a professional job. You just Nights have to find them. That's all. Off, whatever. Yeah. You what just have it? to find that mm -hmm. person and get them the training. Training that they training. need. That's the I'm secret. telling you, if you had an intro a camera and you saw like a gray cusp, you'd be like, see that black stuff? You don't need to be a dental assistant to know that. You go look at that. It's what black. about retail, Rohit? Go, go, like people that work at Nordstrom's. A lot of those people yeah, don't want to, they don't want to work on Saturdays no, and Sundays. Nice and they, holidays. And yeah, those are great people to get. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to be willing to train them, which yeah. isn't a bad thing. Right. They can learn quick. Not when you have people like us yeah. that can yeah. get them trained. Right? Yeah. And we just higher attitude. We'll handle the rest. That's right. Yeah. Scared to even feedback. 
give feedback to employees. Oh, oh yeah. come on. What? Oh, yeah, superstars. Aw, oh, thank you. Awesome. Well, yeah, we, we like the lanyard. Now, I'm all about the lanyard. Now, do, Heidi, do you know what that word is? <laughs> I was going to say no. A lot. <laughs> she doesn't know lanyard. Lanyard. Okay. I give lanyap. You're giving lanyap right now. Oh, I thought this was like blog. <laughs> lanyap is, it's an unexpected gift. It's an unexpected something, a little something extra. And we give a lot of lanyap in the South. Oh, we do. We give a lot of lanyap. And that word actually is in the Webster's Dictionary. So too big for me. I keep it simple. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a southern thing. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope you guys learned something. Well, what else? I, I mean, fun. we can give them okay. another tip. Oh my what, gosh. what else? Oh my goodness. Um, what else can we talk about? Let's see. Um, you know oh, what? My favorite. <laughs> Go ahead. What's yours? Yeah, you oh, I was thinking, okay, I was thinking the super shy doctor that can't tie down, you know, the treatment plan. They can't get him to say yes. You know, just something so simple. Just like, what if you ended your exam? So you're like, you have an MDSTS, right? You find that mesial split tooth syndrome or whatever. And so you tell him, I have a cracked tooth or whatever. And then you don't know how to close it. So you're like, you know what? I want to see you in two weeks. You think you put some little priority on that too? You might say yes. If you're really shy, anybody can say Our photographs. I think, well, of course, that's that, that and, a, and a stronger assistant. You make $10,000 more a month. Like if somebody is shy, do you think they know they're shy? Maybe, okay, if you're watching, you might think, well, you know what, I'm not comfortable talking to the patient about what they need. You need an assistant that can do it. Absolutely. That, because they're the hottest that they're ever going to be when they're in the dental office. That That is when you can show them what's wrong, what will happen if yeah. they don't do it. it. It really is about that easy. So somebody comes in and they present with decay. Um, that They might need a root canal. Um, they might need a crown or two. And, and you show them. And in your verbal skill, you're simply saying, we've got to get you back before this gets worse. Let me show you what can happen. Let me show you what's going on. We want to get you back while costs are less. And then your staff is saying the same message. It's really important for your staff to constantly say the same thing. Everybody should have the same verbal skills. And you practice at staff meetings, all of these things over and over and again. What we did is we recorded phone calls for about 15 years and we listened to them and we hired a group at, at LSU to listen and come up with the, the real objections. There's about seven of them, but that's for another day. And so I just gave you the three of the most important ones and we've done a lot of tracking. You can actually know what to say. You're gonna have a lot more people accept. He's saying don't forget the following up on the treatment plan, which is really true. And, and you need a protocol in your office, an exact system in writing of what you do when they leave, three days later, one week later, two weeks later. They need, they need to have an exact protocol that the staff follow in those follow-ups. But again, they're the hottest that they're going to be when they're in the office. It looks like Dr. Perdomo wants to know the scripting for sealants for adults when insurance doesn't pay. You know, honestly, the way you know if a person, if you've done well in your treatment plan, is you want to hear questions like, how soon can you do that? How long will it take? When you get that type of interest, you've done well in your treatment planning or case acceptance or presentation, right? So they don't have insurance, they're um, needing some sealants, they're an adult, you want to do it for them. You're showing them the deep grooves, you're using your camera, you're showing the black spots, whatever. Um, you're going to say, look, you know, we can do this, what is it, what, 40 bucks for a sealant or so? It's like, you know, this is a way to prevent decay. This is a, we're going to seal those gaps. Yeah, what no she's saying there is benefits. It's benefits. If they don't benefits. see how it will benefit them, they're not right. going to move on it. Yeah, come on, $50. Period deductible. So you, you hit the nail on the head right there. Because if they don't see the benefit, they're going to walk yeah. out the door. Yeah. So why did they come to you in the first place, right? Did they want to save their teeth? Did they want to... Who's that? I keep doing these shots of sweet tea. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's, there's, it, it, girl, there's no... It, sweet yeah, tea. it's not... It's unsweet. Sorry. Well, you put a little <laughs> sprinkle in that. What was that, Sandy? Um, ah, I saw her Long open Island. a package. Sweet and low or something. Oh my gosh, we're crazy. Yeah. No sweet and low. I, I can't stand all the fake sugar. Fake sugar. That's no, bad under no, tea. No, no. Okay. So, it looks like we've answered a ton of questions, right? Like... I mean, we could go on forever. We could. This is super fun. We love yeah. what we do. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta eat dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is fun and uh, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Her brother lives in town, so. Mm.
Or she comes to New Orleans, <gasps> something like that. I don't I know. Can you go to Baton Rouge? That would be so fun. Yeah. I hear there's water near you. I'm so there. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a wonderful night. I hope you learned something. Let us know in the comments if you learned anything. Or have any help. questions. Yeah, happy to help. Okay. Bye. Bye.